I wanted to use this map to explain a concept that deals with amalgamation. Um, it refers to the blending of cultures. Rather than one group eliminating another or one group mixing itself into another. I'm going to use this short video clip where um, Reverend David Braden is explaining about the definition of hybridity and how two religions they come together in the case mm -hmm. of the Virgin of Guadalupe that I'm going to talk about later. What I want to talk about today is syncretism and hybridity, where religions come from. Now, the first thing I want to put in your mind, and it is in your handout, is what's the difference between syncretism, which a lot of people see as a positive, although some don't, and cultural appropriation? Because actually, it's pretty hard to tell the difference. And so I want you to think, because I don't have the answer, that's for sure, uh, what's the difference and when does it happen? So syncretism is basically when something gets folded into a religion uh, over time and becomes part of that religion that wasn't before. Easter in Christianity, for example, is a perfect example of a pagan holiday that slowly became a Christian one. So at Christmas, yeah. So when is it, uh, when is it syncretism and when is it cultural appropriation? Right now, every year um, in UU circles, we have a big fight over the Day of the Dead. Uh, the Day of the Dead, uh, some of you know, I've been traveling in Mexico for 30 years and uh, used to teach in Central Me Mexico. Um, Day of the Dead comes from a particular place in Mexico. And when I started going, it was the only place you saw Day of the Dead. It's Michoacan State, it's in Central Mexico. Then it started spreading. Right, it, it went to San Miguel de Allende eventually, and to Oaxaca, and all, and all, you know, and it slowly took over, even though it was a uh, a native holiday, not a Mexican colonial holiday, spread all over Mexico, and then it began spreading all over the world, and now you see in Target Day of the Dead stuff, right? Um, that's kind of amazing, but you also see it in Europe. It's not just because of uh, Latinx uh, migration into the U.S. It's because people like it, and so so much so that Disney did a blockbuster film about the Day of the Dead, right? Uh, so kind of interesting. So syncretism, by definition, is the amalgamation of, or attempted amalgamation of different religions, cultures, or schools of thought. But it's about how religions blend together, and again. The best way of thinking about this is the Christian holidays, but it, it actually gets much more complicated than that, as I hope I can show you today. Let's start with religion. During the conquest of the Americas, religion was, however, not taught, but imposed using violence. For the indigenous, it was a matter of survival to embrace the Catholic religion, so they started incorporating elements of Christianity into their traditional belief, creating a new syncretic system. By adopting Christian gods, demoting other gods as saints, and practicing indigenous rituals under the disguise of Christianity, they were able to avoid the anger of the Spaniards, yet hold on to their native spirituality and cultural identity. And that's a prime example with La Virgen de Guadalupe or the Virgin of Guadalupe. So I wanted to start with one of the biggest religious symbol of the Americas, and that is the Virgin of Guadalupe. Every December 12th in Mexico, the Virgin of Guadalupe is celebrated, a festivity that according to the legend on December 9th, 1531, made an appearance before Juan Diego on the hill of Tepejac, which is located north of Mexico City. So the Virgin ordered Juan Diego to go with the Archbishop Fray Juan de Sumarga, who was the highest religious authority of Mexico at that time, to build a temple on top of the hill on her honor. The friar did not believe in his words and asked for proof. So Diego goes back to the hill of Tepeyac, 
And the virgin tells him to take roses on his tilma. It is a type of indigenous clothing garment. In Spanish, it's a poncho. And when Diego unrolled his tilma and let go the flowers in front of the fire, the perfect image of La Virgen de Guadalupe is imprinted on Diego's poncho. Immediately, Fray Sumarraga accepted this image as a message of God, and he built the basilica on top of the hill of Tepejac on behalf of the Virgin of Guadalupe. So before the arrival of the Spaniards, there was a shrine dedicated to a female Aztec earth deity called Tonantzin. And Tonantzin in Nahua means our sacred mother. And she's very connected symbolically to fertility and earth. But the Virgin of Guadalupe today has become a national symbol of the Mexican nation, and she's viewed by many to be a special protector of Native American people. I wanted to think that in the minds of many people living within and outside of Mexico, the Virgin of Guadalupe and the ancient Tonaxin are one and the same. And perhaps the blending of these two religious symbols in one represents sort of a reconciliation between the war that took place between the Europeans and the Aztecs. And that is all for this unit. I'm looking forward to the next.